the killing is killing it. Yeah, I've been hard in the pain. I'm Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the... All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. Josh Brown's got us teed up and ready to roll, and we are underway from MetLife Stadium. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. In the slot on the right is Graham. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Second and ten now, Wilson. He's going to try and go deep again. And that's caught inside the 30. It's a big play there for Seattle. 47 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. He was looking for Thomas Rawls there. And it'll bring up third down. Third and long, it's Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're trying to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. And Graham's got it over the middle. That'll be a gain of 16. And on fourth and long, somehow they're able to keep the drive going. Well, the field goal attempt was well in hand. They had that, but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence, it looks like. Yeah, but I bet the defense is going to remember this one, right? They kind of rubbed their nose in it. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and that'll bring up second down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Thomas Rawls, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks take the ball down the field and score on the opening drive. Sometimes when I see these types of plays executed, I think of basketball. Guys boxing other guys off to go out and get a rebound. And he got the rebound right there, but the defense was really placed well. Yeah, they were right there. I mean, that's where it's really tough for a defender. When you're in the right spot, you're draped on the guy catching the ball, yet he still comes down with it. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. The return comes from Orleans Darquan. Oh, a little 360. Oh, <laughs> and not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard.
Manning now on first down. And this one hauled in by Will Ty. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Manning the throw on second down. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. So Manning to Beckham in this defense, they better hone in on that connection. It's almost like an electrical charge for him, isn't it? When he catches the first one, I'm talking about OBJ. He just goes it all and says more, more, more. And really, he, he's just one of those guys that once he gets going, look out. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. Well, that's the kickstarter right there. Eli Manning finding his guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, it's a deadly combination, isn't it? It really is, but what really makes it work is just how unflappable Eli is with his demeanor, able to maintain his calm and his poise, because we know OBJ, he can run pretty hot and get excited out there. Sometimes just one-handed grabs for him. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> just throw it up there. He'll go get it. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. That brings up third down. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Throwing his Manning on third down. Going left side, and he's got Denell. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with a football here as we begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. On first down, Manning. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Still second down. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Now Manning again. And he can't corral it. Maybe a big missed opportunity there defensively in the end zone. And now third down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not pull offense. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. Well, they're going to try this thing. They're at the five, fourth and goal. They're going to go for it. We'll see. Run, probably pass to both in the arsenal. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they'll be down just outside of the end zone at the one-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off.
times you're thinking just run on any down, get some space there. They elect to throw it. It cost them. You get the sense that they were banking on the element of surprise, right? Everyone expects you to run it there. Let's take a shot. Let's throw it. Try and create some space, some room. Looking for Cruz, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. As much football as we watch, we've seen this work many times. In the red zone, first down, take a shot at the end zone, and points result. In this case, though, give credit to the defense. They outguessed them, were prepared, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominic Rogers cromarty And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepting. A great read, and it's picked off. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first-level run, and it was stopped by a second-level player. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've kept this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. And incomplete here on third down. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target. And that brings up fourth down. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. So on fourth down, here's the Canadian-born punter, John Ryan, to kick it away for Seattle. And look at this. It's a fake. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Dominique Rogers. I tell you, you don't have press conferences when you sign guys like this. But he's been a real difference maker so far. That's now two interceptions for him in the game. And when you're getting contributions up and down your 53-man roster, you're going to be all right. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. And that'll bring up second down. So they just got the football on an interception. They almost gave it right back the same way. And you know, when you look over to the bench after that type of a play, number one is pure relief. Didn't give it up. But it's not the coach you're worried about yelling at you. It's those guys on defense who just intercepted the pass who want to break over there. Hey, take care of the football, man. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. And how about this, a fake? And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter. And it didn't work out. 
Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so genius. In this case, not so genius, but I do admire that he went for it. And it's knocked away and incomplete. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So a minute 56 to play in this first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. He's going to go up top again. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. So on fourth down, as seen on TV, here's their resident strongman, John Ryan, on to punt. And look at this, another fake. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. Well, not only did they try to fake it, they put the ball in the arm of their punter, and it didn't work out. Not the quarterback. No. The, the punter. Oh, yeah. yeah and Risky. It, and it's so funny because when it works, genius. When it doesn't work, not so smart. Not so In this case, not so genius, but I do admire that he went for it. And he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Now Manning. He finds his target, Beckham. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And the offense moving quickly to the line. And now the clock will stop as he's able to get up and spike it here. And on second and 10 now. Again, it's Manning over the middle here to Donnell. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And the third down pass falls incomplete. So much of this game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big head on them as they try and catch the ball. Manning indeed going for it on four. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And a short return will be stopped inside the 10 at the eight yard line. He's now thrown four interceptions, and I hate to mention this, but he's a guy that has twice thrown five in his career in a single game. Hard to believe, isn't it? And the tough part is, playing in this NFL, you don't normally just back off totally from throwing the football, do you? So the potential exists for that fifth one to occur. And he hits Jermaine Kurz. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. The grab made by Curse over the middle. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive.
We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to... Well, that came a little abruptly here. Still working on my apple up in the booth. Hang on here. Let me spit this out. And we can get to the third quarter now. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken from the seven. <laughs> And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there, just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. So second and ten here. Four down, four down. Now Manning throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Hey, 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 hey. Throwing is Manning on third down. And that's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. And that brings up fourth down. A pretty good. there and both of these defenses they've had good coverage throughout this one no doubt about it and in today's NFL where we're used to a bit more scoring this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build who's going to make the big play the three straight incompletions they don't care that hasn't dissuaded them they're going to go for it on four and my goodness another interception a great read and it's picked off and they'll start out with great field position at the 47 yard line in enemy territory and that gives him now three interceptions in the game well someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game what was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest 2011 wasn't it kurt coleman oh yeah that's then right with the eagles that's right He's then against the with the eagles and i believe it's against washington and rex Grossman. that's correct Throwing is Wilson. Trying to lay one up deep. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They decide to air it out a little bit on that play, take a shot downfield, but the coverage was really nice. Able to get a hand in and tip it away. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. So a ways to go here on third and ten. On third down, Wilson. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Here's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 47 yards. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Wow, talk about a big fourth down conversion for the score defensively. How do you let that happen? I think you start with the offense and you give them credit for going for and having that type of well, let's face it, audacity. But defensively, I think you're right on target, partner. There's no way something like that's supposed to happen in that situation. You're supposed to be able to shut that down and get the ball back for your own team. Instead, they give up not just a big play, but a touchdown. The return man here, Dwayne Harris. Oh, look at the juke. 
And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Throwing is Manning. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. And yeah, they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road. And now here is another interception. A great read, and it's picked off. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Here's the giant defense now as they head back onto the field. And with this deficit, let's be honest, it's time for them to get a stop. And partners, you understand very well from our time together and visiting with coaches, defensive coordinators tend to be a little more emotional, a little more high strung than others. <laughs> they are. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Dominique Rogers cromarty And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Over the middle to back him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. And he's been one of their few bright spots here this afternoon. And as you pointed out, so far he's gotten his. That's not been the issue at all. But the teammates, the other guys, they've been shut down. That's why the defensive guys have to feel pretty good, even though he's over. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Touchdown, Giants. Victor Cruz, 71 yards. And the Giants able to get this back within a touchdown. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. Brown now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I was in a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. And left side here, it's Graham. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up any. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Third and two, now Wilson. He's got curse. There he goes, right side. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Jermaine Curse, 66 yards. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, 
when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This is taken at his four. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent, but you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. And incomplete here on third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now they're going to try this again. It's another fake. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the Pro Bowl safety cam chancellor. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. What a nightmarish game he's having now. Six interceptions that he has thrown. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Hard to believe we're watching this and have seen it. But it just tells you about the game of football. It giveth and it taketh away. Yeah, the guys, though, that have thrown six interceptions in a game, the likes of Peyton Manning, Brett Favre, I think Joe Namath, he did it three times. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. On second down, here's Wilson going up top. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Cooper Taylor. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Well, I think it's safe to say that the third quarter has not been a whole lot of fun for him. A couple of interceptions thrown. He seems to be a different man here in the second half. And New York set to take the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Whenever they're trying to attack a zone defense, you're trying to figure out where your gaps are going to be. And depending on what type of zone they're playing, it could be on the outside, it could be in the middle, it could be in the seams, in the edges. In this case, they tried to attack the middle of the field, but this zone defense didn't allow it because they were able to see the ball come off the quarterback's hands and everyone was able to react to the football and knock it away. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. Manning, he's going to air one out. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Brandon Browner, and his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. The number seven, usually lucky here, not for him. Seven picks he's thrown in this game. That's only happened six times since 1960. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him, he had won a Heisman Trophy in college, so sometimes you just have a lousy game. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad career, but when you're talking about one game, seven, you're right, not lucky at all. Yeah, Ty Detmer, the last to do it in 2001 to throw seven picks. 
One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. <laughs> and all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, 55 yards. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. any time taken off the clock there. Two plays, and they find the end zone for six points. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This is fielded at the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. They go back to the air here after the eye. NT. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big. Here to begin quarter number four. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Manning to throw on second down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Throwing on first down is Manning. Larry Donnell, the one he was trying to get it to. And it's second down. Well, an incomplete pass certainly doesn't look like a good play. <laughs> For the guy throwing it today, as many interceptions he's thrown, he's got to feel a sigh of relief that the ball actually hit the ground and didn't go in the other direction. To throw, it's Manning. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. So the offense has it first and 10. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. On first down, Manning. And now here is another interception. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. With that interception, he just set a record that nobody ever wants to set, and that's the most picks ever in an NFL game, eight. The eight. The eight. Eight. The, the last time we saw seven, 2001, right? Yeah. It's Ty, Ty Detmer. Detmer. He's with the Lions at that time. To get to eight, are we sure he knows what color jerseys his team's wearing in this one? He's, I don't know. It has not been good. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves. The sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Now, Wilson. 
Watson on first down. Baldwin with it over the middle. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. <laughs> he finds his target, Beckham. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So it's Giants foot. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here we go, first and ten now. Manning now on first down. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Manning now on first down. It's caught by OBJ. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. And the Giants' all-time leader in passing yards and completions and touchdowns. Just another connection. No doubt about it. That's the Eli Manning we know. Pushing the ball downfield and with proficiency. Here's Manning to throw. It's caught. Beckham. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellent. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Brandon Browder. And a short return to the six-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And out now come the Seahawks. To throw is Wilson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. So a defensive brain lapse there and an encroachment penalty. Sometimes when you don't watch the football and make sure that it's snapped, you're watching the offensive player. And they can influence you occasionally and look like they're getting ready to move. And the officials don't detect it. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Oh, Wilson going to throw. 
He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. At his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now Wilson. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And it's incomplete. Still throwing.